We are actually live. How exciting. <laughs> Welcome, y'all. Thank you so much for your patience. How many engineers does it take to uh, get your live stream up and running and working? Bo, while I send a tweet out with the actual correct link to the stream, how about uh, you recap me on your week? How has your week been? My week has been great. great. I have been... Uh... Oh no, I can hear the stream twice in my... There we go. Okay, I can hear now. Um, yeah, my week has been great. I've been uh, caught up with school. And, you know, it's a Monday today, so things have been slow. Great. How about you, oh, you know, I went on a walk today, which was very exciting because um, I'm over here in California and the air quality has been uh, not so great. But I got to go on a nice little walk and breathe some fresh air. Always nice to... Uh, kind of get your mind off of code and the computer for a little bit. Um, while okay. I update this tweet and put out the actual link to the stream boat, can you let the lovely humans at home, or not humans, aliens, uh, extraterrestrials, whatever you may be, um, can you let folks know what we worked on last week? Yeah, so the stream last week was with Natalie, who is the other mentor or TA, um, and you guys worked on uh, as her cognitive as are cognitive services and um, hooking up with the face API. Yes, super fun. And I understand that we're going to be building on that a little bit more today with the face API. I, of course, am gesturing to my face here, uh, hinting at maybe a little bit at what we're doing today. But OK, so last week we worked with Natalie. And we'll make sure to share that link in this video. Um, uh, in the in the show notes. Um, but we're building on top of what we built last week, which was we were working with Azure Cognitive Services. So what are we building today? So this week we are actually going to be building like a static web app for um, what we're doing is actually looking at photos and seeing whether the uh, person or you know it could be an alien in the photo sure. has a beard or not. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, we're the, doing the, uh, sorry, we're doing the front end part of uh, the Face API. Exciting. And have the students of VIT Project worked on any front end thus far? Or is this the first first dive into front end? This is, uh, I wouldn't say this is the first dive. They've done a bit of work on it, but this is going to be the most advanced part. OK, I'm excited. Well, first of all, I want to share, I wore a special shirt today for the VIT Project students. It says, why you delete cookies? Of course, we're doing more front end stuff today, so not as relevant, of course. Um, OK, I'm super excited. I'm going to share my screen here in a second. Um, oh, but a fun little story for folks watching at home and for the Bit Project students. So the way that this demo tutorial kind of came to be is a fun story, because uh, when Bo attended uh, BitCamp, Bit Project, um, someone in his cohort made an application that used the face API, I was able to detect different things. And correct me if I'm wrong, Bo, they were using images um, that included people with real beards and also people with fake beards. So like maybe a knitted beard or like a, you know, maybe a fake beard, like a Halloween beard. And the Azure face API was pretty good at determining real versus fake, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. And so we'll have to test it out once we get our project to a point where we're able to test it. We'll have to do some very realistic ones because on my or versus some fake ones because I know for my um, Mario Kart astrology project, it was always fun to see if uh, Mario and Luigi's fake mustaches were picked up as real versus fake on a cosplayer. Usually fake because oh, yeah. they're usually pretty pretty elaborate mustaches. Okay, I'm going to get my screen set up here. So um, Bo and I are using the lovely uh, live share feature on VS Code. Um, I'm gonna get my screen set up here so people can see what we're doing. So Bo is going to navigate. I'm going to be driving a little bit. We're gonna be hopping back and forth, but this is uh, the code that we will be working on today. And so for anybody just tuning in now, I think we got a, a couple stragglers maybe that just tuned in. So we are building on last week's lecture in which we built most of the um so we set up our azure function online 
um, or on, on Azure, I should say, we deployed that function. We got our uh, tokens and our secret keys and what have you that we needed in order to use the Cognitive Services API. What else did we do, Bo? Am I missing anything? We also, did we get a, any other? I think that was pretty much it. A lot of it was setting it up, yeah. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, so. Where do we go from here? What do we what do we dive okay. into next? So um, we're gonna start off with the HTML. So I put a link in the stream chat that hopefully everyone can see. It's just a little starter template for you guys. Um, I think you have it already, Chloe, or at least we have it in our index.html. Gotcha. And where did you drop um, that link? If you drop it here, I can drop it into the YouTube I chat. I think I posted it in there already. Um, I think it should be set up. Yeah, it's there. Okay, perfect. I'll post it a couple more times just in case we can see it. So we are going to start off by looking at like the skeleton of our starter code. Great. Okay. So give us a little tour of where we're at here. So uh, right now we have a new folder open um, and we have three files. So each file is for a different language or a different part of our web app that we're going to create. So today we're mainly going to be focusing on the HTML and a few JavaScript functions. Um, but if you guys want to go ahead and style your website however you want, uh, you can do that in the style.css file. And there is a beard emoji. so. If you're looking to be creative, <laughs> you can always yeah. add emojis in there. All righty. So should I click over to HTML? Yeah. So let's start off by looking at the starter code um, that you guys have. So this is really basic. Um, whenever you create a new, I guess, website or a web app, uh, you always have your head and the body. Um, so the head is where you put metadata, and the body is will actually displays uh, when you host your website. Um, so after everyone has that, um, if you could scroll down a bit, Chloe, um, I linked a few attributes already. So basically, um, we can use the script um, attribute to link a JavaScript file. So if you look in our, I guess, our Explorer, we have a file called face.js. Um, and we're basically just linking that so it knows what functions to call. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's what's and hooking up our HTML to our JavaScript. It's yeah, that little yeah, that's, bridge. Yeah, that's how we link it, yeah. Um, and we have to make sure to link this in the body, or usually at the bottom of the body, because that's when it runs the fastest and it's called for. Perfect. All right. Yeah, so uh, before we get started, there's also one more thing we have. We have jQuery. Um, so we use jQuery to kind of target uh, certain HTML IDs in classes um, so we can use them in the JavaScript. Perfect. So there were a few students asking questions on how to link it. Uh, no, you don't need to download it. Uh, it's just like linking any other, um, I guess, file. Um, but in this case, it's a actual like link from online. Yes. And do you want to explain a little bit? Because I know maybe for folks in the program who are just getting started with that, I know that was always kind of a difficult concept for me to wrap my brain around of like, OK, so all this code sits at you know an HTTPS link, and it's just there, and I can just grab from it. What was it for you, Bo, that kind of made that, that click for you? <laughs> Um, honestly, it was after linking like uh, a file locally myself. So what we're doing here is we're linking the JavaScript file. Um, it kind of made more sense that this code is just um, like stored in a library in the internet. Yes. So you're basically, it's basically the same thing. Um, so it's almost it's like the way that I like to explain it is, you know, we have we know that we're using JavaScript here, and we need a sort of like translator to translate this JavaScript to the HTML. But here's like all of the uh, here's all of the documentation that you need over here, like when you need it, kind of thing. So no need to download it; it's just always kind of there and and able for you to access from the cloud. Yeah, so to exactly. Speak. Yeah. 
All right, cool. Where is this cool. chat happening, Bo? Is it in the, oh, there's a different chat maybe. Um, yeah, I think it should be just in the regular um, Perfect. stream chat. Yeah. Just wanted okay. to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm make looking sure at the YouTube sure. chat. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so what's next? So now we're gonna start with our HTML. So Sweet. I'm gonna start off by, um, we're gonna do a few things. So we're gonna use things called hidden divs, um, which are basically like forms that nobody can see. Okay. Uh, so we, so we're doing this because we want to reference these later to display data. So, right. um, should I show an example of like what we're making? Yes. We How about you it? share your screen and I will put you oh, up yeah. live here. I think that's great. So that way we can kind of zoom out, mm -hmm. get a bigger picture, and show folks mm -hmm. what we're doing. Let me just open up the live real quick. Also, if you have any questions, hi, Emily, hi, PJ, hi. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Having fun. Week three of Bit Project. So for those who maybe aren't familiar, while I share both screen, um, Bit Project and Bit Camp are a program with high school students and college students teaching folks how to code in a boot camp style program. Pretty exciting stuff. And we're doing one of the lectures. Oh, I think you cut up, uh, cut out, Chloe. Hmm. So, uh, that I disappear. All right. Oh, you're back. You're back. <laughs> I'm back, baby. <laughs> All right. So I'm okay. over here, like a magical genie in the corner. So, um, I was just saying, maybe for um. For, this is great because we're doing a little bit of a zoomed out version here. Um, so give us a walkthrough of what we are building. Okay, so um, for the real project, you guys are going to be building something super similar. Um, but for this one, basically, we're taking in a image, um, hopefully of someone with a beard or without a beard, but there has to be you know, some sort of facial structure. Um, and then we are calling the uh, face API, which we uh, set up in week two, um, to actually analyze the image. And it will return some data to us about whether uh, the image shows sign of a beard. Um, I believe it's sideburns that it also checks for, mm -hmm. and uh, a mustache. And you can get creative. Like if you decide you want to test out like, oh, I want to see if they have glasses or you know yeah. any kind of stuff, feel free to add any parameters that you want when you're playing with the API yourself. So yeah, this is so, kind of the skeleton here, it seems. And and you mentioned that they can add their own CSS if they want after afterwards, but this is the basic yeah. form of shape of what we're doing. Cool, okay. So I'm gonna add a photo. Um, so we have two, sh two functions, or two JavaScript functions running. Um, one of them is to actually display the image once we upload it. And the other one is doing all the post and uh, call functions to actually use the API. So I'll upload a photo. So we have this one. Um, so if we click the submit button, um, we should get some data back. And hopefully, yeah. So you can see this photo has zero mustache, zero sideburns, and zero beard, um, which is correct. <laughs> <laughs> How did it? I thought it would have picked up sideburns from the hair on the side, but I guess it didn't. Um, oh, it let's see. Up. I'm I'm not sure if I'm seeing the. Your screen may have froze, Bo, because I'm uh, not. I didn't see an image get uploaded. Let's see. Okay, let me. Change screen share again. Because we got to see the most important part. <laughs> I just did this. Did this a one. recursive. Oh, there we go. Okay, definitely not a beard there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, what I did was click submit, and then we got some data back. Um, so Perfect. beard zero, sideburn zero, mustache zero, um, and then I can try it with this guy. So hopefully Looks it picks up. Pretty something. promising beard. It does. Um, Submit. Beard or no beard. <laughs> I'm going to add sound to mine. <laughs> it might not pick up a beard from this guy because the photo isn't too uh, 
script Let's or see. Oh, yeah see. sometimes almost like a, a snapchat filter sometimes the face has to be and then sometimes when you call it too many times um api yeah, gets stuck up but i think we yeah, got I guess the idea it, yeah we got the idea um <laughs> so we Perfect. can try that thing out if it works then uh let me Let's see. Should I share my screen? Oh, my beautiful face again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me get us back to our original view here. All right. Da, da, da. Ta da. Okay. So we just saw what we're going to build, which is a pretty simple, but still, you know, some, some uploading and API calling and post. And I would imagine to get requests in there as well. Um, yeah. So where do so, we begin to uh, build this? awesome project so we're going to start off pretty simple um and we're just going to create like the title which is what we have um so i'm gonna just create the div class or actually i can tell you what to um to make if you want to do it like that sure like, give it to you step by step yeah so we're going to create a new um a div so use a div in html to hold your content so uh, if you make a new div class in the HTML page, um, just under body, like somewhere here. Do some divs, OK. Uh, I'll make the div, and then you can add the class. So we have to give this div a class, um, and it's going to be called navbar wrapper. OK. So classes are super important um, because that's how you target certain HTML attributes. Um, and then there's also IDs. So you use IDs to actually reference them in JavaScript. Um, you can't reference a class. You can only reference an ID. OK. OK. Mm -hmm. And the navbar in this case, when we were looking at like that visual previously, that's pretty much, is that the area where we were uploading all the information? That was the area where we just had a bit of starter text. And it said, uh, I think it said example project. Yes. So okay. that's just giving some space at the top for you know decoration if people want to do it. Perfect. And folks yeah. can get creative. All right. Yeah. OK. So. so I'm in my div. And you said we need to make a class, right? Yes. Yeah, so we need to give it the class modifier. I'm going to do class equals. And then we're just going to call it navbar. It, do, it doesn't matter. We can okay. just call it navbar. Navbar. Um, this is just so people can reference it later on. OK. Perfect. OK. So now we're going to make another div, um, which is going to be called container. Okay. So we'll make a div, and we'll give it the class equals container. And Sweet. people use container divs to, or classes, I guess, um, but they use container divs to actually um, style everything. So if you want to center all your code, um, this is kind of like the overall wrapper. Sweet. So in here, we are going to have a h1 tag. So if you can go ahead and make an h1 tag. Sure. Oh, I love okay. h1s. <laughs> yes. That is that one. All right. Is, should this be inside of here? Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Okay. I love but this share it. mode. I feel like this is an oh, yeah. ad for share mode, but so easy to cool. program together. Okay, so I've got an H1, and I'm assuming this, this is probably going to be like yeah. my project. <laughs> yeah, we can just call it. It doesn't matter too much. Um, and then we can actually use another tag, which is a HR tag, which basically just adds a I guess a line or a uh, a separator. Okay. So if you do um, HR and then a forward slash. Okay. HR forward it's slash. A one. Yeah, they didn't get the best syntax, but yeah. So yeah, um, that's about it for our container for our nav bar. So now we're gonna actually be working on uh, our forms. So. We are going to make another container um, to actually style this. So if we, yeah, I'll do this one because it's out of here. So now we have another container. Um, and in this one, we're going to actually add a few hidden, hidden inputs and forms. Um, we're going to add our main form, which calls a JavaScript function. 
um, and we're going to add our button to um, call the API. And why are these hidden, Bo? I imagine because something's going to maybe appear there a little bit later. Yeah, so we call these, um, I guess, hidden inputs because we're not actually displaying anything right now. Um, and we just have them there uh, with a given ID so we can reference them later. Sweet. So I imagine, like, similar to when we were uploading the picture, the picture wasn't there before, but when we mm -hmm. upload it, it then appears. Yeah, so we'll actually create a, uh, like, a hidden image ID as well. Nice. All righty. Awesome. Let's go. Let's do it. So many. Okay, so we have, okay. what are the different things that we have to put in here? Okay, so um, we need two hidden divs or hidden inputs. So if you can make two input tags, that would be great. Okay, and this is um, in our container here. Yeah, this is going to be in our second container. Gotcha. Um, and we're just going to give them the type hidden. Okay. So that actually makes them hidden so they don't appear. So input. Oh, you did that one? I'll do, I'll do the other one. Okay. Input so. type equals hidden. Type hidden. Um, and then we're also going to give them a ID so we can reference them later. So we can actually um, like output our data here. Okay. So yours is going to be called hidden underscore token. Okay. And hidden mine is going to be called hidden emotion. Um, you can name these what you want, but you just have to make sure to you know reference them in the end. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we need to actually create a form. So we are going to start off by creating a new form. The form is where we're actually going to input data. So we're also going to give this one an ID. I'm just going to do this one because it's like the overall one. Um, sure. And there's a few important things. So in HTML, if you want to call a function when, um, I guess, this form is submitted, you can use the on submit attribute. And this is where we're going to actually write the name for our function. So um, in this case, we're just going to call it handle event. That's about it for this one. Okay. Um, and then we also have to specify actually one more thing. So we have to specify what type of um, data this is actually going to like take in. Which is so going to be we'll in uh, an image in this case, right? Yeah. So okay. it's called multi-part form data, basically. There, cool. So that is it for our form. Um, and then we're going to put a few things in the form. So now is where we're going to actually do the image. So I'll make like the image class. And then uh, if you could actually make a new div in this one uh, with an ID image div, that would be cool. I can do that. OK. Live share is very cool, actually. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You can get. I feel like everybody should just be live sharing all the time. They'd get like twice as much work done. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing a div ID. So yeah, you're gonna give uh, make a div and give it the ID image dash div. Okay. Image dash div. All right. Ooh, and then, nice. Divs so, on divs up in here. <laughs> yeah, a lot of divs. So now we need to create um, another input tag. So this is where the person is actually going to like input their file. So if you saw in the example, um, uh, we had a button where you could actually submit um, the file you upload. So we're going to create a input tag. Oh, let me make this. There we go. So we're going to create an input tag. Um, and then we're going to give it the type file. So this is the specified what we're actually taking in. And then we only want it to accept certain types. So this is going to be an image, of course. And we'll also give it a name image to be referenced later. The ID is going to equal file. And then we're also going to use one more thing. So Chloe, you remember how in our form we used the on submit handler? Yes. So now we're going to use another one, which is going to be called on change. So whenever this is basically whenever something happens, um, we're going to call another function. 
See, I really love working uh, specifically with HTML because I'm a very visual person. So the whole idea of like, all right, we have our image div and what does our image need to do? Okay, we need to upload the image and then we need it to like get something from that image, get it sent somewhere. So I love that we're walking through. It's rare that I get to do this much HTML, but it's so exciting because you kind of build it, it, it really is sort of the skeleton of it. You kind of build it as you go and figure out what different uh, things that you need along the way. Nice little breadcrumbs. So one of the students asked for the starter code, so I'm just gonna send them. Yes. This is the GitHub yes. Um, And then Chloe, so if you can go to view um, and then turn on word wrap, that'll Let's allow, see. I'm pretty sure, um, I mean, I, I'm not sure what it is on the Mac. Uh, I might not have that uh, during live share. Let me see. Hmm. Uh, so if you go to view, it might be grayed out. I don't know why. Yeah, there it is. Toggle word web. So this just basically shows like all the code without. Yeah, cool. Oh, there we go. Okay. Awesome. Okay, let's continue. Yeah. Yes. So um, we have our input, um, and we are going to do the hidden image uh, that I was talking about. So okay. here, if you can make a image tag, um, just a regular IMG, okay. uh, and then we're going to give it the ID output. Ooh, let me find my actual cursor here. There we go. OK, so this is going, where am I putting this? I'm putting this in the. Image div? Yeah, right here. Where I'm... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello, sir. Okay, so I'm doing image ID equals mm -hmm. and output. output, yes. And then we can also give it one more attribute just to limit like the size that it displays at. So if you can give it all width. Yes. So width. and then you do equal 30%. 30%. So then we need to finish the P tag because usually when you're in the image. Actually, we can leave it like that because it's in. Um, I don't think we need to do the dash left P. Cool. Okay. So now we have our input, we have our hidden image, and we have to add one more thing. So now we have to add a button to actually submit this form data. That is important. Otherwise, it's just going to be yeah, a page. <laughs> so we're going to make a button, um, and we're going to do a couple of things. So we're going to give it the type of submit, and then we're going to give it a couple classes. Um, this is for bootstrap if you want to actually style it later on. Let's go hide it. Um, and then we're going to give it a bit of text, and it's going to be called submit. So we have our button now. Um, I think that is everything we need to do for this container. Um, now we have to do one more thing. So on the example, when we click the button, um, it displayed the data at the bottom, right? Yes, we had the, uh, it told us how confident it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now we need to actually create another couple of divs um, just to output that data on. Okay. So, oh, right, because we have to display our outcome from what we take yeah. in as the image. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to come down here um, and create two more divs. So the first div is going to be given the ID facial dash hair. Perfect. Um, and the second div actually does not matter because we haven't linked it with the Spotify API yet. That's right. So, <laughs> That is about it for this HTML. All um, right. Let me go through, make sure we have everything. Let's or maybe see. looks good. We've got all our starter code here. We've got looking good. OK. Mm -hmm. And a handy thing I always do is um, look up an HTML formatter just so everything looks nice. Um, there's a, I, I bet there is a VS Code extension for that. but. Look how nice it looks now. It looks so clean. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you want to move on to the JavaScript? All righty. Let's 
go over here. We have the starter code here. We're console logging. What's up, peeps? <laughs> yeah, you need that or it just won't work. <laughs> I think you should leave that at the top. Yeah, so I should definitely log that. Okay, so uh, in our HTML, we called two functions. Um, one was a handle function and one was a load file function. So yes. if you can create two functions for me, that would be okay. great. Exciting. All righty. So function, what should mm -hmm. I call this one? So call this one load file. Uh, and then make sure the argument is event. Events. All right. I guess we should just go ahead and start working on this one, right? Yeah. OK, so this one, I imagine we need a variable of our uh, picture. <laughs> yes, yes. I think we need that. So um, yeah, we'll have a new variable called picture image. Doesn't matter. Um, and then we're going to use the document.getElementById to actually target um, this, or target the div that we set um, with the ID to output. Yes. So if you can go back into our HTML after you reference the output, you can see that we actually gave the image tag that. So, yes. Let's yeah. see. Where, okay, so here we're doing get element by ID output. output. And then here, where is our output? Oh, here um, we go. The, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's how that's linking. Okay, that makes sense. So that kind of connects all of that together. Output. Great. Alrighty. Okay, so now we're going to use a object URL. So basically what we're doing here is we're going to target the file that is uploaded. Um, in this case, an image. And then we're going to actually just have it uh, output on the variable that we just gave, which is image. So, right. yeah. So we can do this by giving it a dot source. Okay. And then we have to actually set it to a create object URL. So you can do this by doing URL dot create object URL. Ooh. URL dot create object URL. There we go. And always remember the um, camel case when we're programming. Oh, yes. No, you, you did it right, but okay. just like in the future. <laughs> okay, so um, now you need to do, uh, you have to target the file, right? So we have to target the first file. So okay. um, everyone knows in programming, it doesn't start at 1, it starts at 0. So we have to actually target files 0. Right. Um, zero index file system here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then um, this is an event. So the argument argument we passed through was an event. So you want to make sure to reference that. Okay. Event dot. And then we are. Targeting. Target. So target. Oops. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I don't even know what that one does. Wow. Dot files. Okay. And we're doing. Zero. Zero. Perfect. Okay. So if we actually ran a live server now, um, this would work. Nice. Cool. Pretty exciting stuff. Pretty cool. Okay. So now we just did the load file function. Now what do we need to build? We need another function, so right? We need one more function. So this is the handler function. So this is going to actually use a post request to our as a function that we made. Okay. All right. So you can get started by creating a new function, um, just how you did previously, and call it um, handle. Okay. Um, and then we have to also make sure this function is asynchronous. So right. basically, it'll just keep running. Yeah. And have the students dealt with asynchronous functions before? I don't think they did unless they did something in week two with it. Do you mind giving them a little short description just so they know a little bit what's going on under the hood? Because I know that can be kind of a 
question mark. <laughs> yeah, so um, basically an asynchronous function uses like the await keyword um, and it only passes through, it's pretty confusing, um, but basically it runs like without being called fully. Um, and in JavaScript, there's a bunch of like functions that you can use that are asynchronous um, and they use like the words await um, and then you have a promise function. So the I deal with them a lot when I'm doing Azure functions, I feel like, because mm -hmm. often I'm, I'm waiting either for a request or, you know, for a specific time to come up. So I feel like just, yeah. I guess with JavaScript in general, lots of async functions. <laughs> All right, so I've got my async function here to handle the event. Nice. So um, now we're just going to create like a little friendly reminder for us to make sure um, like we know the photo submit. So we're going to console.log submitting um, so we can see. Console.log. Just do a little submitting mm -hmm. message. Alrighty. And then we're going to use a bit of jQuery to actually target um, some HTML and change it after this function is called. Okay. So you're going to target a ID. So make sure you use hashtag. Hashtag. Okay. Nice. And then we are going to be targeting emotions. 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 And then you can use the, uh, I believe it's dot HTML function. Um, and then Oh, <laughs> I love Oops. when HTML all collection. I love when that happens. <laughs> um, and then just put whatever you want to change it to. So this would be loading. This would be like, hi there. Okay. We're processing this stuff. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Processing. Beep, boop, boop. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, cool. And then we need one more thing. Um, so we don't want our page to refresh because that would break everything. Right. So you're going to use the prevent default function. So you're going to do event.prevent default. Okay. Right, because we wouldn't want it to refresh because we need that image. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's about it for our like pre-processing part of this. So this is just like to make sure um, we know what's happening um, when we run our app. Great. So now we're going to actually get into like handling form data um, and using like the fetch API. Uh -oh. I pressed tab at the wrong spot. Oh, I got scared that maybe a spooky ghost had a uh, <laughs> yeah. haunting our VS code. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we're going to actually target the form. So if you can create a new variable called uh, my form or form. Okay. And this is going, this is outside of our preview, or this is so in the function. function. So it's okay. going to be my form. So we're going to use a variable and call it my form. Okay. And then um, we're going to once again use the document get element by ID. And that's referencing back to our HTML. Okay. <clears throat> And then let me just check what form, what we gave the idea of our form. So we gave it image, uh, yeah, image dash form up here. Uh, okay. Does it show when I highlight? Yes. Okay, cool. So uh, this is the form we're actually referencing because remember we gave it the type multi-part. So awesome. if we go back into the JavaScript, we can do my form. And document dot get element by ID and the div was <laughs> can you remind me what it was called? <laughs> the ID you put on it. It was let's see, my form image dash image form. Dash. <laughs> Short term memory. Blocks. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Hi PJ. Ooh, yes. Word wrap quite a useful tool. Thank you, Bo, for bringing that up. Um, oh, there's apparently, there's a cool kid shot of the students of it project, PJ. I don't know where it is either. I'm out of the loop too. <laughs> All right, let's see. 
Da, 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 da. Okay, so am I on the right doc here? Yes. Okay, so we made the image form variable here. Perfect. Okay, so um, now we are going to create another variable. Okay. So this is our payload. So uh, this is us actually creating like a new uh, form data or a new, I guess it's it's like creating new data that we're going to use for this um, for this uh, ID, which is okay. image data. So okay. we're going to use the command, or I guess we're just going to use new form data, and it's going to focus on the variable my form. Okay, so new form data mm -hmm. taking uh, in argument can be um yeah my form my form okay cool okay so now we're gonna actually work with the fetch api so um in week two you guys should have done that um and there would have been a link where you can actually call the face api um for us chloe i'm gonna send you it okay but this is basically how we're going to call the face API. Where are you sending it to? In the cool kids chat. The are you cool only, kids you chat. Be... Okay. Oh, so I should share this. Okay. Let me open it up. Oh, it's loading. It says not working. You might have to load it. Maybe we should I'll share just, your uh... screen. Wait, let me just send it. Should I send it on Twitter? Uh. Oh, don't open this up. So this is the API call. Yes. So, <laughs> I thought that link looked familiar. In yeah, the cool it won't actually chat. do anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I think I just called create... the API twice, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. It's not my Natalie's account that's gonna get charged. <laughs> Sorry, Natalie. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> uh, Okay, so we're gonna create a new constant. I'll do this part because it's um really sure. confusing. So we're going to create a new constant. A constant is a variable that is set once and cannot be changed um, throughout, like the rest of the code. Gotcha. So we're going to use await. So remember earlier we used, um, I guess, this asynchronous function? Yes. Now we're actually using the keyword await um, to fetch from, I believe it's this. Yeah. So if you can see this link, let me turn on my word wrap. So that's the function URL. Yeah, that is the function uh, face API call right there. Gotcha. OK. Here, let me make this yeah. a little so, smaller over here. Let Oop. me do this. So that's where we're getting it from. And then we have to actually give it a method. So the method is going to be post because we're um, going to be retrieving data. And then the body is going to be payload. So remember, uh, we just set two new variables, payload and my form. Yes, but I already so forgot what payload did. <laughs> oh, it got the, the new is data. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically now we're just setting this to get the data from here. Um, Perfect. The and method we're posting is post. that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So let me add, I believe, a semicolon just because it looks nice. It's beautiful. It's cool. beautiful code. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now we are actually going to go into the response that we got from uh, the Fetch API. And we're going to look at, uh, I, I guess, specific details that the Face API returned. Yes. So if you can make a new variable called data. I can do that. And what this is going to do is, once again, we're going to use await because it's waiting for the post request. And it's going to be using response, which is the constant we made. And we're going to use dot JSON. Yes. There we go. Response. Right. There we go. Cool. So this basically just turns it, or I guess it doesn't turn it into JSON, but it just like retrieves it as We're JSON. waiting for it. And waiting JSON is, that. yeah, JSON is like, uh, it's a way of storing like simple data. Yes, I it's great. It's, and you'll use it a lot with JavaScript. That's the best <laughs> way to put it. Yeah. So now is a bit of code from the face API to actually like, um, 
a look into the specifics. So for this project, yeah, for this project, we are focusing on facial hair attributes. Um, but for the actual song engine, you're going to be looking at emotions. So this is going to be different. The rest of it is practically the same. You're basically just calling different uh, mm -hmm. attributes, facial attributes or pieces of the face API. But for this yeah. one, we'll be doing facial hair because beards. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're going to create a new variable, call it beard. Love um, it. And it's going to use uh, the data variable, which we set to the response JSON. And we're going to use analysis zero dot face attributes and then we are going to target facial hair perfect so that's and i assume you is... got most of that from the documentation for mm -hmm, the face mm -hmm. api yeah yes. i know it well <laughs> <laughs> okay so now that we have actually all our data um we just need to find a way to actually display it so yeah. we're going to use jquery here again um but we actually need to format how we're going to display it. So we are going to use, um, I guess you just call it HTML in JavaScript. So if you can create a new variable called result string. I can do that. Let's see. Not that. Var result string. Oops. Mm -hmm. And then you need to use, I don't know what, it's like the the backwards comma, if you know what I mean. Oh, the um, back tick thing. Yes, this back thing. tick. That's what it's called. Yeah. So that's how we. Yeah, yeah. So now we're gonna actually um, write this in HTML. So anything inside this variable is what is gonna show up on our website. Um, okay. So this is gonna be where our results are living. Correct. So. We are detecting the beard or facial hair, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're gonna look for three things. Um, but first, if you want to use an H three tag, H three. Um, you can use an H one if you prefer it. But H three we'll is H3. A... we'll get creative here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then just call it, I guess, I don't know, facial hair in image or something like that. Facial. Yeah, in image. Mm -hmm. Oops, I can um, there we go. Just so we know, like, what this data is. Um, yeah. Okay. So after this, we're gonna target three things. So you're gonna create three p tags, um, okay. and each of them are gonna be looking for a different thing. I'm just gonna make one and then copy them twice, but actually mm -hmm. not capitalize it. There we go. Okay. Three. P tags, cool. So depending on what you want to look at, Chloe, which one's most important? Um, you can put them, I guess, beard first, mustache second, sideburns it's third. Definitely most important. Yeah. <laughs> mustache. We got sideburns. Yep. And then this is going to output the data, correct? So I probably wanted. So. Yeah, so okay. this is this is all HTML still. So now we actually need to target um, the data that we got earlier. Yes. So Oops. we can do this by looking at our uh, beard variable, um, and that's where the data is actually stored. Yes, OK. So this would be in our HTML, correct? Mm -hmm. Where's our beard? Or, no, no, no. Oh, this no. is still in our JavaScript. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. It's right above result string. If you see, oh, there we go. actually, I can highlight it. Yeah, so Perfect. now we're going to use three things. So I'll do the first one. Um, we have to use the money sign because this is how we actually target a variable. And what did you do first? You did beard. So <laughs> it's going to be beard.beard. Beard. Um, <laughs> yes. Maximum beard. <laughs> Yeah, so if you can do the second one and the third one. Okay, and the way that this works is it can call within the JavaScript that we're, or sorry, within the HTML that we're doing in our JavaScript, it's able to call mm -hmm. that with the dollar sign. Yeah. Beard dot mustache. Mustache, and then this one is beard dot sideburns. Perfect, okay. Cool, so 
that is about it. So lastly, we need one more line of jQuery to change the HTML. All right. So I guess up here, we can just reuse this code. So remember we had that up uh, at the top? Yes. So now we need to just target uh, a different ID. So in this case, if we go in our index or our HTML, I'm highlighting the uh, hidden ID that we're using, right? Yes, right here. Yeah, so we're going to actually target that. Facial dash hair. OK. Facial. So this is where it all kind of ties together. Oops, oh my gosh, oh. what is happening? Oh, typing things. It's the end of the day. OK, facial yep. hair dot HTML, and then, and then this is probably something else, I would assume. Yeah. This so is, this is going to be. So forgetting facial hair dot HTML. Oh, the result string. Yeah. So this is this is the HTML we want to actually add. Right. And with that, we are done. We're done. We did it. Clean it up a little that bit here. Beautiful. Wow. Okay. Any questions in the chat? I'm going to look at the chat while you clean that up. Okay. Well, you have access to the secret chat, Bo. But um, okay, this is exciting. We built a lot in a very short amount of time, in less than an hour, Bo. We console yeah, logged. What's up, peeps? The most important part of this uh, live stream for Bit Project. You're welcome. Um, then we went through here, so we really just kind of connected a lot of what was going on. Here, let me save this. Yeah. Oops. Let me actually be in the right tab. There we go. Um, so we walked through our HTML here. We made all of this uh, awesome calls to make sure that we had places for our form, the input of the form, the image, um, and um, the output. We also had those hidden uh, hidden divs that we had in there as well. And we connected it into our JavaScript. So now that we've done all that, Bo, what can folks look forward to building on top of this for the next lecture so they have an idea of where they're going next? OK, so next week is all about the Spotify API. Ooh, exciting. OK, and yeah. how does this connect in with what we did today? Because I guess we, we determined the beard. So now are we determining mm -hmm. emotion? Yeah, so instead of beard or facial hair, they're going to be looking at emotion. Um, nice. And then Natalie will get into this more next week. But basically, Spotify rates their songs by valence, um, which is how happy or sad a song is. Cool. Mm -hmm. so, so we'll be able to recommend a song based on the emotion data given back to us. Yep, yep, yep. Pretty exciting exactly. stuff. Well, so any parting cool. words, Bo, before we uh, let the students go for the night? We learned – we. Manage to pack in a lot in this one session. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we covered everything that they need for the homework. So, alrighty, yay for us! Woo, we did it, Bo! High five through the screen, ten five, I guess. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Well, thank you so much, Bo, for taking the time and walking us through this lecture today. Super excited thank for next you. week. Spotify API, adding a new API into everything. Um, and feel free to reach out to Bo or myself or Natalie if you have any questions, and we'll see you for next week's stream. Mm -hmm. Bye, y'all. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> All right.